thing in your nightmare, that thing that's holding you back, that thing that's dragging you down, that thing is you. You will not outwork me. And the whole gig is just a giant hustle. That's all it is. Life is just a hustle. That's all life is. One giant hustle. See, we're pulling a little night shift. We got everything painted uh, our other color. Our color that we went with is actually a leftover color from the garage. So I actually have a color code for this if I need to do any touching up and have a brand. What we're gonna do right now is the wheel wells. We're doing this tonight, so all this will be dry in the morning so that we can run our trim and everything in the morning. I've went over the wheel wells with one of these sanding blocks. You can pick these up at Lowe's or Home Depot. Um, it's a sanding sponge, okay? I don't remember the grit. Pretty much you can use anything that comes on the sanding sponges, especially if yours are this nasty and rusty and tore up. Um, so all I did was smooth them out with this, took a rag, no soap, no water, no paint thinner, nothing. I literally just wiped them down. If you want to use some prep, paint prep or soap and water, wipe them down, have at it, but um, I'm not worried about it. These things are tore up. Uh, I'm going over it with some oil base, so I'm um, not worried about it at all. So now that we have prepped it with our sponge, we've wiped it down, we've swept around the edges with our broom. The product I'm gonna use is the same stuff I've used underneath the race car actually uh, before. This is flat black uh, Rust-Oleum. I'm not a big fan of this at all because it is flat black. I'd rather have satin. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on and burn it up. And then that way, if these things uh, get anything else on them during the rest of the construction, I can maybe pick up some satin and go back over it. Now you can spray paint these if you want, bedline them really whatever you want to do I already have this so the name of this game is budget I already have it i need to burn it up uh, so this is what we're going to do this is an oil base though so you're not cleaning your brush out with water when you're done i don't have a disposable brush i'd buy one if i was you so you don't have to use paint thinner so sadly i think i'm gonna be trashing this one tonight after i get this done so i've had this old faithful for a little while but it's gonna be the end of it i guess tonight so let's pop this open shake this up or shake this up then pop it open and let's brush these out look at that million times better see that's the ticket that's the type of stuff you have to do now we're going to get all around this frame also uh eventually just haven't done it yet a lot of that you can get rattle can so i'd get a lot of the center and the spring and everything with rattle can and try to get the perimeters of rattle can maybe hold some cardboard up but we need to try to get a lot of that dirt out not tonight we'll also probably get around this door frame and we still need to take these out rattle candies uh black so looking good looking good all this paint will be dry in the morning and then we can start running all of our trim so it's sunday night memorial day weekend three day weekend i'm making excellent progress i'm hoping for by tomorrow afternoon to be able to paint the floor so goal for tomorrow, all trim, floor painted. Let's so, go. All right, so what we're working on this morning is we're gonna start getting this piece out. And I knew this was gonna be a task alone. I still have not looked under the trailer to see if this is through bolted or not. I'm gonna just start working on the plywood um, and seeing if that's just bolted through the plywood. Sometimes these D-rings are just bolted through plywood. Other times they're bolted through metal. First thing we gotta do is get this metal strip out of here and then start getting all the screws out. Now these screws have got years and years of dirt packed it into them. You can see that this thing practically looks like a fossil. How deep, how much dirt it's got in it. It's, it's, it's nuts how people don't sweep out and clean out these things, but uh, it's pretty common. So with your screw heads, if you just take your drill bit and straight up go in there like this, then you're gonna be pushing sand and dirt down in there and you're gonna strip out the head. So what you gotta do first, is what I do is take me a pick and you gotta clean the head of the screw out, okay? You gotta get the dirt out of it first and then blow it out. Normally I just use my mouth to blow it out and then you can normally screw it out. After you blow it, after you do that, then normally you get a bite on it. That one is stripped. It's not even, the wood left, it's not even wood, nothing hardly even left underneath of these screws on some of them. Well, miscalculation, stuck my hands through that hole filled under there. Thought I felt just plywood. I didn't think them D-rings were bolted down to metal. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not, but it is. So the trailer manufacturer did put a strip of metal there and a couple tack welds. So I've had to take a skill saw, set your depth to the thickness of the plywood so the blade's not hanging out tremendously underneath. 
you really don't want the blade hanging out at all. You want the blade about 90% into the plywood. And that way it don't hit the metal I-beams when you go to rip it. So I've ripped some cuts through. That's the reason why you can see it is tore up right there because the cut didn't go all the way through. And ripped it up. So instead of laying underneath the mud, I've just cut sections out of it. And now I can sit here and unbolt it as I please. So I'm going to finish exhausting myself and ripping this piece out and then we can get uh everything cleaned up so then we can take pliers and take the screws that are left behind out with pliers way easier than uh the ones that were stripped out and get all the edges cleaned out cut our new sheet get our new sheet down all right we got some breakage so you can see right there that this i beams broke the main one that goes across which ties into your D-rings, so we can't leave that alone. Now, unfortunately, I know how to weld um, a little bit, so I might have to fix that with weld. I say unfortunately because I didn't want to pull the welder out today. Just kind of looking at how this dovetail is made. So you can just see how it's wider up there, and then it gets smaller down here because they have sloped the back of this trailer. And I have already tore myself up this morning, man. Um, but there's no supports like right here in the center where the tire is. A lot of people will probably be like, dude, you should weld in some supports. I think we're good. I don't think, um, I don't think we need to. Because if we put the car in facing forward with the motor up there, then the back tire should be right around all of this stuff where you get a ton of beams starting to go through here. Okay. Because of the wing and parachute and everything. So the tire should be sitting approximately right there on top of that weight. If we put it in backwards with the wing that way, tires should be sitting approximately also right there on that beam, if not just a little bit in front of it. But the weight's never going to be back here. It's just going to roll across it and then it should be up there on that flat floor. All right, so for a piece of metal that goes up there, the curve that goes in the front, um, there's these white pieces. Now, I was going to base coat, clear coat these original. Originally, they're pretty tore up. I decided to screw it. Let's DIY this. So what we've done... Okay, go ahead. So all I've done is took this and hit it with a scotch brake pad just to kind of scuff it up. And then normally I would rinse it off with soap and water. I don't feel like getting everything wet. So we're just gonna clean it with some glass cleaner, wipe it down with some glass cleaner. Uh, as you can see, it's wet enough out here. And then we're gonna hit it with some hammered paint. So this creates like this texture. That way if it has anything on it or any imperfection or anything, anything it hides it. Um, I think this would be a cool little touch for the front area right there to accent the cabinets and I think it'll look good when it's done um if for some reason it looks like crap literally take it off and retrace these pieces out of another piece of metal and completely redo it but this is what we're going to do for right now I think this is going to be the easiest um and way more basic than taking this to the shop and doing base coat clear coat and all that so let's hit it with a little bit of glass cleaner all right so there we go I really really like that that turned out uh very good for diy right here backyard very basic very easy now it gives it that texture okay you see how it's got all of that little texture to it kind yeah, of it has all that texture to it because that's what it's designed to create um not you know even surface so or like not a slick surface so if you do spray paint on a slick surface like just normal spray paint then a lot of times you can tell it's spray paint where it overlapped and stuff like that but if you use this stuff this makes it look really, really good. Like it doesn't look like spray paint at all. Um, and I think this is gonna look great up there in the ceiling. So let's move on do the second sheet and then we're gonna let these dry and we'll get these up this week or like tonight. On our second piece, all of this, you can actually feel this. So some somebody has actually splattered something all over it that does not wipe off. So you have to actually sand it. So that's the reason why I'm hoping that, you know, on this piece, the uh, hammered paint really helps hide it. This would also be a good piece to use like bed liner on or something like that to hide everything so you don't have to put a lot of effort into uh, sanding it smooth or you don't have to go buy metal um, and recut a piece to remake these. Uh, even though the metal probably won't be too expensive depending on where you're at. All right, so we made our patch over here. And then after looking at these closer, um, I started trying to take this side out and this bolt is just spinning in there. These things are full of dirt and rust. And then this piece down here is actually pretty clobbered up. Um, I think it has gotten pretty weak. You can see it, it doesn't take much to move it. 
and there's not very good welds right here at all it looks like uh, from the manufacturer and just two little tack welds over there so i'm gonna go ahead and roll this because these things are shot and just not worth reusing this and then go and buy hardware where i can get two new ones of these off of ebay um, for really cheap with all the hardware and the backing plates so we're gonna go ahead and cut these tacks and just rip both of these out and then just lay the new plywood down and then i'll mark up here where they're where they fall at and then that will allow me when the new ones come in to just straight drill through everything and um not have to worry about reusing this busted up mess so uh, let's get these cut out and out of the way all right so there we go besides all the boogery welds on that side because that channel is just so rusty and dirty and um i didn't clean it up and we're welding with gas that's what i hate about welding gas but where it's nice and clean it's not bad at all or where it's not nice and clean because <laughs> i didn't even clean up the top piece but where it's cleaner i should say it's not bad at all but over there that's some poo poo welds but that's some dirty crap so got them in now what we could do is cut our plywood just lay it over top and then when our ding rings come in we'll just drill straight through the plywood and everything we're gonna go ahead and mark it on the floor though where they fall at so that i don't forget now of course nothing is perfect on these trailers so on this side we're tight okay we're tight as we want to be on this side and on this side we got a gap maybe half an inch on that and i've got this open maybe half an inch on that side we're gonna have to fill that seam right there where they meet up full of caulking probably liquid nails we'll probably push a bunch of liquid nails in there and squish it down in there to help that uh seal up but you have to kind of split the difference um these things aren't ever going to be perfect man it's just the way they are but making progress put a couple screws in that i messed up when i was at lowe's earlier and forgot to buy my screws get a couple in it to hold down and keep rock and rolling all right there we go <laughs> man dude it looks so good and we still gotta do cabinet doors uh, i thought about actually rattle cannon bed liner on the inside of it i don't think i am i think i'm just gonna leave it alone it's gonna get beat all up um it's all stained so we've stained it using black ebony stain we've trimmed it out like this on the corner so we have a piece of corner trim all the way up it um both of this this is all corner trim and then it is notched around that piece right there really need to get another piece of these and go straight down to cover that up and to kind of separate it i might have to pick up something like that from lowe's if they have uh something that's rounded on both sides so we've stained the the shelf up there and all that now all we have to do is just brush all this out with a water base um finished to protect it we'll definitely be doing a couple coats now keep in mind that this piece right here will get covered up this is just going to probably be one solid door and then that piece right there also gets covered up it's just gonna be one solid big door but i just went ahead and uh stained them so that when the doors open kind of divides them up as um as its own shelf it kind of just keeps it uniform versus opening it and be looking at it raw a raw piece so the stain we used is just a regular min wax that you would get from lowe's or home depot it is a true black 274 um now i didn't really cover the staining process because um, i'm trying to just not flood the channel with too much woodworking videos per se because i could get carried away with that because like i said i have a construction background this is what i enjoy doing um but just a quick note if you are staining something First off, when you build your cabinets, we didn't really go over this, forgot to put it in a video. I try to keep all the grain in the same direction. So wood has a grain to it. So if you look at these cabinets in person, this piece, this piece, this piece, the countertop, all of that, the grain is running like this. So the grain runs up and down and it runs down here, up and down, and then like that back. Okay, so it's all is straight in a line. Now there's a couple pieces like this up here that is running sideways, and then a couple pieces like the little fillers is running sideways. But that way, when it's finished, the grain's all in the same direction, and it ain't all all over the place. Uh, when you're putting your stain on, first off, you can see I trimmed everything out with yellow tape. This is kind of like a build-in, a custom build-in that you would do in a new construction. You build it in place, then you finish it all out. Um, tape all your edges up. You can go back and touch up, obviously, with paint on everything but um tape your edges up put your stain on all you do is use regular rags uh like finishing rags or cleaning rags or something like that not a shop towel the stuff i use i picked up from lowe's is just called cleaning rags it's kind of like a paper towel but it comes in a bag 
Um, you can also get like the torn up t-shirts, the white t-shirts that are ripped all up in a the bag. They work really freaking good, uh, but they're a little bit more money. Um, wipe your stain on, just like wax, wax on, wax off. So normally wipe your stain on, really wet, and then take it off with a dry, a dry cloth to kind of lift it off. Now, if you don't put it on super wet, you can just rub it in where it will just soak up in the wood. But when you're staining it, and especially when you're wiping off, go with the grain. So wipe it off in the same direction of the grain. That way, if you accidentally leave any strokes in the wipe off with the rag in the stain, like any buildup, it will match the grain in the same direction. It won't look like crap. Um, just make sure you wipe it all off. That'll give you a smooth, uniform look. And you should end up with something that looks pretty freaking good. Now, when this thing gets finished on, it's going to look even amazing. And when the cabinet doors are on it, it's going to look good. It's just going to keep getting better and better and better. When we trim all this out, all of these right here, it's going to look better. Put this piece up here, like it's just going to keep getting better and better and better. Um, so let's move on to the next step and let's keep making progress. It's getting kind of late this afternoon. It's like almost seven o'clock. So I don't know how late I'm going to work out here tonight, but um, I'm trying to make some progress, y'all. Try not to All right, out. so this is what we're doing. We have took our strips that we ripped down and we're staining them with our ebony. This is our strips. We just took blue on and we just ripped blue on now. And I'm not using the light color side, I'm using the reddish side. Uh, no reason, it's just that side's the side I wanted to use. And this is what it looks like whenever you start. Now we've popped the chalk line. Basically we've almost split this. I'm a little heavy on the bottom. Uh, but we've popped a chalk line down the wall so that we have a straight edge to go off of. And I'm just nailing them up. I have stained up all the long ones I've got. Now you could go and measure the feet you need. But pretty much for one of these trailers, man, if you grab you one sheet of Luon, it's probably going to be plenty. And all I did was cut my scraps up first. I have not cut my actual whole sheet up. So I'm hoping to take my sheet back to get some money back. But man, look how good that looks. Dude, this thing is going to be freaking sweet when this trailer is done. Um, so I'm gonna keep getting it. I guess I'm gonna switch. Well, I'll go ahead and cut this one for the length that this one needs. And we'll probably even trim out the ends to cover up the, some of that. And yeah, and then we'll be doing these. I don't know how much I'm gonna get done tonight because Harper's already went to bed. I don't wanna wake her up, but I'm just trying to run what I can.